Revolution architect at WSO2. I've been in WSO2 for four years nowadays, and uh, yeah, I'm dealing with the uh, precise activity and uh, event uh, attendance, this kind of activity. And today I have I have a goal. Today a goal I would like that uh, as a as a takeaway you get uh, a high level understanding of how the how WSO2 the WSO2 platform can help you to create what we call the digital core. And we will get back today to what we mean for digital core in order to create a better digital experience for your users. So we insist a lot on this word of digital experience or customer experience. Okay, I'm uh, Because we, as you can see in this, uh, in this slide, we show uh, how is the market. We see that uh, the economy is moving towards an experience. Uh, toward, uh, Experience is becoming the real differentiators in uh, in in the companies uh, nowadays. So, a good uh, providing a great uh, user experience to the customers uh, should uh, become a real uh, uh, differentiator that make uh, a company um, stay on the market or or or, or, or not. Um, as a consequence, uh, organizations are embracing uh, uh, digital transformation. They want to build digital experience. And uh, this uh, led to or is driven by also this fragmentation of the application that is going on for many years. Now we are in this called, this is called edge app area with uh, mobile app, uh, IoT apps, and, but this, this, this tendency will, uh, will continue and will uh, grow in, in the future. So basically uh, what the company want to do, they want uh, to quickly deliver digital experience to their customers. That's their mission that they have, and for that they need to create uh, what we call digital context. Digital context are the uh, channels or the application that provide this uh, digital experience, and typically company um, build digital context. They don't buy or they develop this area, uh, they can be uh, traditional one like web, uh, mobile, internet of things, but uh, other areas are, are uh, considered nowadays are relevant like artificial intelligence or machine learning, bots, etc. All these um, channels are needed to provide a good digital experience to the customer. However, what they uh, realize, companies realize that they have something different. They have typically what we call systems of records. What is it, systems of records? The systems of records are uh, database applications where all the relevant assets of, of a company are, are, are stored. For example, in WSO2, we have also uh, our uh, system of records. For example, we have application for um, managing the, the customers, or we have uh, application for managing the people, um, and, and typically, contrary to the digital context, uh, company um, buy system of records or subscribe to system of records. They are moving to cloud. This is the trend. However, to, to build digital context starting from systems of records is not a, a, an easy is not an easy task. And here is where the what we call digital core comes to, into the picture. And the digital core, in our vision, is based on APIs, integration, and identities. So these three um, components help to, um, to create... Um, yeah. Once you have this in place, digital core in place, now it's, it's easier to create uh, the digital context. Huh? So uh, this, this is the middle way layer where we, as a WSO2, are... Um, and what, uh, how, what we offer as WSO2 to, to, to build this, uh, this area. This is the, our uh, product, this is our um, offering. And uh, in the API manager and integration area, we have Coreo and API manager. So Coreo is the SaaS solution, uh, is what we call integration and, uh, as a services, integration platform as a services, or integration API platform as a services. And is a solution to build API and to manage API. And uh, for as far as the on-premises solution or open source solution, we have WSO2 API Manager, which uh, includes the integration part. 
Uh, this is for the users uh, of the, co the customer, uh, company that uh, prefer to stay on the so classical or either on premises. When we talk about premises, we do not talk about uh, really. Uh, we, we mean something more than a classical data center deployment. We consider for us, you can download our product, uh, run and deploy it uh, wherever you want in your private cloud or in your data center. The other area we cover which we cover is uh, the uh, identity and access management. And also for that, we have um, a cloud offering, which is uh, called Asgardio, which is the identity uh, as a services, and the open source or download, downloadable product, which is WSO2 Identity Server. So as you can see, we have a change in the point of view. We have an offering for uh, a, um, a public cloud offering, which is Coreo and Asgardio. And we have a traditional on-premises of private cloud offering, eh, which is based on WS2 API Manager and WS2 Identity Server. <laughs> to complete our offer, uh, we have two verticals. For those of you that are interested or are in this sector, we have the open banking vertical for the financial company, which uh, has been started a few years ago when um, a financial company had to comply with the um, PSD2 standard, but now have a, a broader uh, scope, uh, uh, trying to cover the digitalization project of financial institutes. And then we have, uh, for a care company, we have another vertical called WS2 Open Care, which has the main uh, um, target of integrate and digitalize the uh, uh, healthcare platform, FHIR, for example. And then there is the services part. And the services part is both uh, from a strategic and tactical, I would say. You know, strategic, we can help company uh, to build the uh, API strategy, digital strategy. And while the professional services are more tactical, more uh, meant to cover a specific project uh, to help you in deploying and developing with our solutions. And last but not least, very important, we have a training program and a certification program that you can uh, embrace for uh, get, uh, fa get familiar with our product and start your, your projects. This is our offer. And uh, an important aspect of our offer is what we call flexibility in the deployment. This is a, this is a, a matter I we insist a lot and I will return on this part later in this slide. And really, I, I think it's a differentiator between us and our competitors. So the, the possibility to have your identity management or API management, where you prefer. If you want to start with uh, an on-premises deployment, you can do it. Uh, if you prefer to have a, a then later move or immediately start in a, with a SaaS option, you have a SaaS offering. And uh, for those companies that uh, want to take advantage of the benefit of cloud but do not fully trust a public cloud option, we have a private cloud. Uh, the, the possibility to have a private cloud hmm, to a solution where you uh, manage your, uh, our uh, WSO2 installation on behalf of And to complete the solution, also this is a, a choice that you can take uh, and change also thanks to a hybrid option. So you can have part of the component uh, in the public cloud and part of on-premises. For example, API Manager is suitable for this approach because, as you may know, API Manager typically based on control plane and data plane. Uh, and you can have a control plane, for example, in the public cloud and a data plane on-premises. Now, if let me spend... Uh, a few words a bit on detail on the two uh, area. One is uh, WS, uh, API, um, the integration and API area, the first one. And here we cover the what, integrations and API. So integration is still uh, um, a valid uh, um, area where a company invests. Uh, we are talking of integration for Personally, I start talking about integration or dealing with integration project in early 2000, even early. Uh, but it's still a valid, uh, a valid, uh, a valid area. If I took a presentation I did 20 years ago, 
the motivation for implementing integration projects are still there and still valid because many companies are still relying on not automated process uh, to integrate their applications. And as far as APIs is concerned, if you look at this, um, um, at this slide, you really realize that APIs are everywhere. Nowadays. So company can uh, really um, rely on, uh, for, for each and every area, you can see for banking, payment, communication, or on uh, ready-to-use components, and uh, we reuse them and focus on uh, um, Focus the development on their own business, and this is the, the, the very the power of having API, on API um, uh, landscape. Um, and when we talk about API, it's important to mention that we are not focusing only on the traditional REST asynchronous API, but uh, the market is also moving towards uh, asynchronous API or heaven heaven based uh, heaven driven API. Um, another trend that we have noticed is that APIs are used either uh, both for internal purposes and external. So internal purposes with the purpose to, of, of reusage, eh? they want to reuse the internal asset in a better way. And external, they want to uh, enlarge the scope of their business, eh? to uh, connect the external partner to make business on their behalf. These are the two trends, that is why API are, are very uh, relevant in the, in, the, in the market nowadays. And yeah, I mean, uh, our uh, on-premises or downloadable uh, solution is uh, what we call API Manager 4.1. We have just released it beginning of this uh, month. And um, it includes either integration capabilities and API Manager management capabilities. So with uh, in the integration part, you can create, uh, we can rely on integration engine, on the streaming engine to create classical ESB-like integration or a streaming-based integration. And uh, the, the suite is completed by, uh, the, of course, development components and observability components. And when, once you have your API, it's about to manage. And then it, where API manager come into the picture and WC2 API manager is not uh, a gateway but it's a tool which covers all the end, uh, mm, uh, user experience related, uh, connected to the API management. Uh, the, the, the experience of an API owner uh, can help an API owner to register and manage the life cycle of the API. Or uh, it fits perfectly the uh, consumer uh, user experience. So I'm an, an API, an application developer, I want to uh, search for internal or external API, connect the development portal, and uh, register to the API after agreeing on the SLA uh, and start using, start building my application based on this API. And of course, the, the, the data plane part, which is we, we provide into flavor, huh? one is the, the gateway for more traditional uh, monolithic uh, deployment or on, on the micro gateway. Uh, for microservices approach. And uh, with the two components, you can, as you can see here in these slides, you can re realize what we call one uh, stop shop for all services in your organization. And you can see here, you can notice the similarity of, of, with the uh, layered uh, high level architecture I showed before. So this is the nothing like the system of, record, of records I spoke about. Uh, the beginning of my presentation, and this is the uh, the digital core. The digital core, you, uh, your purpose is to build API uh, to be used by your um, uh, in, the, in your digital context, and uh, you can create synchronous API or asynchronous API with the a proper tooling and expose them with the API manager to your API developer or app developer. Um, the other uh, challenge that uh, guided us when we decided uh, about our platform is uh, the, um, the fact that the cloud is uh, eating the software. Uh, at the moment, if we look at this uh, table, we see that 
around 40% of the application are running on uh, cloud at, at nowadays. And if you compare that with 10 years ago, 10 years ago it was less than 10%. So the, the growth is uh, really incredible. And in 10 years nowadays, uh, we will have almost, uh, the cloud will have replaced uh, the classical data center deployment. However, this is not uh, without pain. So we know, because we made some survey with customer and IT manager, we know the move, the move to the cloud is somehow uh, difficult. So the level, the cost are high and the level of failure in the cloud project is also uh, very, very high. And our response to that is what we call is Coreo. Coreo is our, uh, uh, as I said before, integration uh, platform as a services or has the ambition to be something more, to be a digital platform as a services. And with Coreo is the only one platform for API development, deployment, and management on cloud. The full cloud experience of the development, the deployment, and the, and the runtime is full on cloud. Um, it does not, <laughs> it comes from the experience that we have in the more traditional product, API manager, enterprise integrator, and identity server. And the there are a few key, key capabilities that um, help to uh, the, our developer to have a, um, a better developer experience. So uh, it's based on a, on a language that has been specifically designed for integration and that is specifically designed for cloud native application. And this low code and pro code uh, option is very beneficial for the developer because they can start uh, uh, developing uh, as a new services with the low code approach and switch to the code when they want to do something specific, something more difficult. And other facilities the developer can count on uh, for uh, increase, reduce the, the time to development and the quality of the software this design is uh, the marketplace. You can uh, rely on a share marketplace to reuse the asset that the colleagues develop. Uh, and, um, in my opinion, quite interesting, the fact that it relies on different uh, AI and machine learning uh, capabilities for data mapping, for example, or coding tips, or runtime diagnostic. Uh, okay, this is the um, uh, API integration part. The other a very important asset that you need to deal with uh, if you want to build your digital core are certain identities. And here I don't have any observation, but I, want, I wanted to, to quote this sentence for Garner in uh, November 21, uh, where they stress the fact that the, this um, customer expectation for a better uh, user experience is not without consequences. So it's putting out of pressure in the IT uh, department uh, that, that they need to deploy this uh, uh, application with a great user experience without compromising on security and on the process or, or that, that they have in place of the quality of the software that they have in place. So that's the reason why our uh, identity and access management uh, or identity, uh, yeah, identity access management proposal we call customer identity management proposal, as we label like CIM without compromise. We want, as our mission, we want to provide a solution, the identity and asset management solution with, um, as a good balance between um, uh, the user need and the IT, uh, the, the user expectation and the IT uh, need. For example, uh, the balance between security and uh, convenience. So uh, for that, uh, for example, you need uh, features like uh, uh, risk-based ba risk adaptive authentication, multi-factor authentication, federated authentication, or social passwordless. So those are all features that user expect to, to, to see, to, to have, but that uh, if not uh, treated appropriately can put the in an entire IT system at risk. And there are other uh, challenges that we try 
to address with our product. Uh, for example, uh, to, to have a, a solution which is uh, syntax complete but easy to deploy, uh, to that get, get, which give best end-to-end -end developer experience. And uh, also, again, I want to stress this fact once more on the deployment flexibility. So we want our customer that do not have to make a choice uh, or be forced to a choice towards a specific deployment solution. So we don't, we are not the, not going to have our customer say you have to deploy uh, our solution in uh, you have in uh, in SaaS huh? or public cloud. So we provide uh, uh, as I show you in one of the slide before quick. Uh, mm, quite a, a lot of flexibility in terms of the product. And finally, the, the economics part. Our identity and access management solution, for example, uh, allow you to scale in terms of users without the uh, need to uh, scale in terms of money. So it's, uh, it, it is based on the predictable pricing, which uh, remain low even at high scale. And um, this is the architecture of our uh, customer identity access manager offering, uh, which is based on uh, two components. As I said before, the uh, downloadable one, uh, which is the identity server for on-premises or private cloud deployment, and Asgardio, which is the identity as a services uh, uh, solution. They are based on the same technology. They are, very, they are similar. So we, Asgardio is based on the WS identity server. And the private cloud offering is also based on the AWS identity, identity set. So we are develop, So we are putting all our effort in in what product that we decline in different way. And hybrid is uh, available or will be available at the end of the uh, end of the years. And what we are uh, trying to um, provide to our uh, to our customer is a series of facilities which make the, the, the work of our developer or identity expert more easy. For example, we are providing a software development kit and with software development kit our developer, developer, a developer or identity expert uh, can uh, uh, deal with the process like single sign-on etc. without a need of uh, deep competence on the single sign -on protocol, SAML or OpenID Connect, because they can rely on, on, rely on the language they are working with. And the same, with, uh, we are going to provide agents, agents for uh, the main containers in the market, for Tomcat, Apache, and Nginx, to have an automated uh, plugin uh, for handling the uh, authentication process. Uh, the marketplace for uh, connecting with uh, uh, devices or external identity provider or other services provider, etc. And uh, uh, what we call IDE plugins, which uh, help companies to uh, um, customize uh, the processes, the identity processes. So you can customize your uh, authentication process with uh, uh, writing code and connecting uh, your identity with other part of our suite, uh, for example, the integration part or the core part. And as uh, capabilities, uh, WSO2 Identity Server and Asgardio provide uh, all the minimum, let's call them, uh, these are the, the list of the Capabilities each and every identity provider must have, and we we provide all of them, and we think we are very strong in all of, all of them, especially in this area of single sign-on and federation, identity bridging, and strong and adapted authentication. This is our area where, where of excellence. Let's call it like this. Uh, but on top of that, we have some advantage or some differentiators. Our competitors do not necessarily provide. Uh, for example, the fact that we can mm, use identity server to provide API security. And this comes from our the, the, the 
the synergy with the, the, the product that we have. As we have an API manager product, we can provide uh, a better API security in our identity and access management tool. Or what we call business system integration. You may need to con connect uh, your identity access manager to uh, your application uh, because when you, for example, a property of, of a user change, you want to propagate this uh, information to uh, Salesforce, for example. And this is possible with uh, the integration of the, 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 the products in our area. Huh? So you can easily connect identity server with API manager and provide business system integration. Extensibility also is a quite uh, a key differentiator because our product is not, uh, all our approach is not like uh, this is the product, these are the features. Uh, if you are okay, well, if not, we can't do much. So the product is designed to be extensive. It's designed to, to with frameworks, you can plug in your own uh, uh, customizations very easily. And finally, this is uh, SaaS, uh, we talk uh, a lot on this part. Okay, this is the product part. Uh, but why you should rely on us? And so there are at least uh, uh, six factors that, um, based on what you uh, should understand that WSO2 is a good choice for you. Uh, the first one that we are uh, in the market for uh, more than 15 years, we turned 15 years, uh, two years ago, and we celebrate. And... Um, uh, and we, have, uh, we are backed by a um, financial invest, investment company like Goldman Sachs. We recently got a 90 million funding from them, which uh, gave us the possibility to make, uh, to realize or implement uh, our, our strategy, our API management and uh, identity strategy. Another differentiator is an open source, which brings definitely different advantages, easy of adoption, the fact that you can rely on a community, the fact that there is no vendor lock-in, and this open source is based also open standard. Uh, our presence, which is, uh, we are based in, uh, in um, Santa Clara, California, but we have offices, as you can see, in, uh, in each and every conti continent, and uh, we have a, you have one big office in London, and another in, in Germany. And we are growing. We are growing on, from different point of view. We are growing in terms of uh, revenue. Uh, last year we had 30% uh, growth in ARR and 50, uh, uh, yeah, 30% in year ARR. We are growing, we are investing in, invest, investing in uh, uh, getting new employees and most of our employees are engineers. So we are a very technical company. And we have, uh, finally, the most important part, we are getting more and more customers every year. So at the moment we count more than 700 registered subscribers, to which you have to add uh, the open source users. Um, and how our customers are basically the witness of uh, the success of, the, of the, product, the, the validity of the product and are not uh, uh, linked to any specific sector, so we have customers in each and every sector, from financial to technology to government, and uh, in, as I said before, in more than 90 countries in the world. And uh, another uh, uh, factor that uh, you should uh, consider when the, why you would uh, rely on WSO2 for your project is the uh, analyst recognition. So we are considered uh, uh, well uh, reported both from Forrester and Gardner, especially Forrester placed us as a leader and uh, assigned as a huge market share. And we are here together with really um, big, big, big company like IBM or, or Google. And this for the API manager part, and the same is happening for um, for identity and access management. We are uh, in the uh, consider uh, uh, 
in the Forester analyst uh, report and also from Kupiger Call, which is a dedicated specific uh, analyst for the identity access management area. Uh, yeah, to summarize, uh, we also try to understand uh, the numeric benefit of uh, implementing uh, uh, the WS2 project. Uh, and for that, we make a survive with the uh, IT directors. And uh, we understood that companies that uh, rely on WS2 for their project can uh, implement their project faster, uh, save money, and uh, reuse their existing systems. And uh, of course, also quite important, the fact that uh, you can uh, uh, preserve your investment uh, because we are an open source company, so your intellectual property is uh, safe. That's good. Yeah, uh, that's it. Uh, I didn't want to enter much in the detail of uh, the architecture of the product, uh, but um, this can be the first step for you, and then if you want uh, to understand better how our product works, you can contact either us directly or SmartWave and we can work together to uh, understand whether what is the best solution for you. Okay, thank you for listening to me. It has been a pleasure. I can take some questions if you want.